Hey, happy Friday. Good morning. Feb, uh, February, July 28th. Um, another overcast day. Uh, kind of cloudy up in the sky. Uh, burned off in the afternoon and got really warm. But yesterday afternoon was just really, really hot. And that's, uh, I think it's a mix of the, hum the humidity with the clouds burning off. Um, so, funny thing. I ended up, st I stopped doing all the push-ups, the 750 push-ups once that was over, that was over. And now I wake up this morning and I'm just getting on my shoes like I normally do every morning and my back, ah, you know, I get that little, uh, a little pinch in the back, which I haven't had in a long time. It's been quite a while since I felt that little pinch and usually that's a sign to me that it's usually one of two things. It's usually stress induced, or it's um, because I'm out of shape. So I don't think that it's that I'm out of shape. I think that it has to do with the fact that maybe it's just the stress. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I just felt that pinch, and like ah, you, you're like you're coming up, and you just stop, and you're like ah, man. So. I think with me, it's more than anything, it's it's a muscle. Um, I don't think it's nerve related at all. Um, you know, and I used to get these a lot when I was younger um, and just overweight. I had, you know, 40 extra pounds on my body and so it's going to be in and around the belly area and the back, it's like middle right side of my back and it's not... I've had back ones, back pains come where I was completely just floored. You know, like I, I had one. I remember when I was like twenty, like twenty four, twenty five, um, and my back went out, or I felt the pinch, and I just dropped in the shower, and it just it floored me. And I've never felt something like that before, and I don't think I've felt anything since. Um, I've had other ones where. I mean, the shower was pretty painful because <laughs> I fell down and so I thought I died. Um, but, you know, it's it it sucks because it was this the situation that, um, you know, being an active younger person and your back goes out, that's, you know, it's one of those things that's just like, yeah, man, you know, and I'm, I'm too young for this. You know, I see a lot of people with back pain and they're in their 40s and 50s and 60s and this is not me, man. So, so this morning I got to deal with that. It's going to be like that for the most for most of the day. It usually wears off after a day or so. Um, it doesn't go on too long with me. And I also think that, uh, you know, I might have to start doing some more push-ups. At least doing something during the course of the day. Um, I, I, I haven't done push-ups all week, which has been good, but um, I just can't run every single day, and so I need to get something kind of mixed in. I just need to kind of develop a routine to make the whole process go along much more smoothly. Um, so this weekend, got lined up, got Mariner game tomorrow. Uh, the Mets are in town, New York Mets, and it's going to spend some time up in Pike Place. And the funny thing is, you know, most people live in Washington State. You know, everyone comes here to visit. They're like, hey, let's go see the you know, Space Needle and let's go, you know, see the Ferris Wheel and Pike Place Market. And that's pretty much all people want to see. And they come here and it's like, you know, we live in Washington. We don't really visit those places, you know, because we live here. Most people do that because that's all they're exposed to on TV. Or, you know, it's like whenever the Seahawks are on TV, you always, especially on national TV, they always show the fish market. That's all they show. And you're like, you know what? That's cool. You know, if you've gone there like once or twice in your life, you're like, cool, I've seen it. But when you live here, it's like, that's not a, that's not all we are. You know, there are mountains here too. They're beautiful scenery. There's a lot of things to do in this state other than watch people catch fish. You know, and it's just you just see it from an outsider's perspective. It's like that's all they want to do because that's all that they see. They see the Space Needle, you know, and they see the fish and the Pike Place Market. And they see the Ferris wheel on the water, and that's like they all want to see that. And it's kind of all in this game, same general area. <laughs> but <clears throat> hey, you know, do whatever you can to make people happy when they visit because you know, you want them to kind of enjoy their stay and you know, say, hey, Washington's a beautiful place, and it doesn't rain here all the time. 
So they're coming up from LA. Uh, I'm gonna hang out with them. And on Sunday, um, I've been, you know, tossed around the idea of doing Spray Park uh, up in Rainier, and I'm just kind of torn on the how tired I've been when I've gotten up really early and taken in a lot of miles. Because yesterday I woke up at three, I ran eight miles, I came home, you know, I worked all day, and I was kind of, to be completely honest with you, I was pretty dead all day. And then I come home and I'm just super, uh, and just kind of like, <clears throat> kind of grumpy. And I ended up going, getting sleep last night. I don't know how much I got, but I got a lot of sleep last night. I probably got eight hours. Um, and to me, that's, that's, all, that's too much, you know, because when I wake up in the morning, it's like my head's in the clouds and I'm just, you know, the people that I see all the time in the morning where they're like, they look like they're tired, I feel like that. I'm like, you know what? I feel like you do right now. And so four, five hours for me is perfect. That's all I need. That's all I need. I don't need much. I'm not a, you know, one of these kind of sleepers that needs to sleep all the time. That's my only, you know, my only sanctuary. That's my only happiness in the world is sleeping on a pillow. You know, I fell asleep on the couch last night and I slept great. I slept hard. I mean, normally, I don't normally dream. And when I do dream, it's when I get really deep sleep. And last night I slept hard. And, uh, you know, the funny thing is, I kind of remember, is like up to a year ago, um, at least in the few months, I haven't really taken melatonin. I take melatonin, <clears throat> usually kind of, you know, slow me down and everything and help me get to sleep sometimes, but lately I haven't even really taken it at all, you know. Um, and it's because I've been really pushing my workouts and I've been tired all the time. So, so also getting four to five hours of sleep a day also kind of help out the fact that I, I sleep well at night. So it's a good balance. It's, I think that's what it really is, is it's a good balance. You know, if I get eight hours of sleep a night and I wake up and I go throughout my day, I'm really productive and then I'm not really tired at the end of the day. But if I get four to five hours, which might not be quite as much, and then I do my normal routine throughout the day, work, work out and all that and come home. And at the end of the night, I'm tired. So it's I get a little bit of sleep. I struggle a little bit during the day sometimes, but at nighttime, I'm out. I'm out, I sleep well, I, I get my sleep in. So I think that's why the balance is, it's a, it's a delicate teeter-totter balance. Eight hours of sleep is too much. And so I know, usually when I get eight hours of sleep, that night, I will, you know, the following night, I'm gonna be up, and it might be harder for me to get to sleep. So that's why, I think it's a good thing that I did that last night. Slept a lot of time, uh, like eight hours last night because tonight uh, we have family visiting from LA and you know they're gonna be there and they might wanna watch some TV or stay up and talk and all that while the kids are in bed. Um, so that'll be a good thing, but most of the time I don't need much sleep. So <clears throat> I got a lot of steps in yesterday. I think I got over 40,000, which doesn't happen very often. It happens when I really push, like when I do the Sound of Narrows or a long hike, and then I also walk a lot. So yesterday was a long day for me. I got, uh, see the thing is I have a Garmin and a Fitbit. Uh, so I keep my Fitbit on my thumb and I got a Garmin here. The Garmin is, I love the Garmin. I, this is the best $600 I've ever spent. And it was, uh, you know, it, it's, it's strong, it's durable, it's dependable, it's waterproof up to a certain degree, but you know, you can't, I mean, anything has an area where it doesn't quite last under the water. But this thing has been perfect, excellent for me. Best $600 I've ever spent. And it's just, it doesn't calibrate steps as much as the Fitbit. The Fitbit, you get steps, you know, if you sneeze, you achoo, you know, you get like 10 steps. But with the Garmin, it's pretty, it's a little more picky on how what it conceives as a step. And so I get a lot less. So yesterday I got like 25000 on my Garmin and on my Fitbit I got forty. So that's a 15,000 step difference between two, basically, pedometers that you could have. So I think the Garmin's a little more trustworthy because it's hard, it makes you work, it's harder, and it doesn't cal you know, calculate steps as, as easily as the Fitbit, and it's a lot more durable. So if you had a choice between the two, I'd go with the Garmin. 
So anyway, I, you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to sign off here for, probably for the week and uh, start right back up on Monday. Have a great weekend.